Today on TFL Ride, this is episode three, and we're going to do a deep dive into Kawasaki's current lineup of motorcycles, and that includes everything from street bikes to cruisers and dirt bikes, all of it. Yeah, this is going to be a big buyer's guide video. We're going through every single model that Kawasaki has for sale in 2022, um, and we did this as a video for BMW motorcycles. Yeah, just a regular video. Regular, longer format video, but you guys really liked that video, and you said in the comments that you wanted to see us do it for more manufacturers. So number two on our list is Kawasaki, and if you want to see more videos like this, buyer's guide style videos where we run through every model a manufacturer offers, let us know which brand you want to see next down in the comments below. We'll be sure to do it. Yeah, and the nice thing about doing this in a podcast format instead of a video is that when we did it with BMW, we had to spend about 30 seconds on each bike and then move on because otherwise it would have been about an hour long video. Now we can take some more time talking more detail about each one of these bikes. Um, because this is a podcast. Yeah, and obviously there's a lot of bikes here. We haven't ridden anywhere close to all of these bikes, but the ones we have ridden, we'll be able to stop and kind of talk a little bit more about, um, or the bikes that interest us that we maybe would like to get some seat time on. Same thing, we can stop and just dive a little deeper into it and spend some more time and not just kind of rush through with specs and price and then move on to the next bike. Yeah, now this list is going to start out with one of the biggest categories of uh, of Kawasaki bikes, which is the Ninja lineup. And there are a lot of Ninjas from Kawasaki. So starting out in what they call the sport category, you have the Ninja 400, which is a bike that Alex can speak to because this is actually a class of bike that Alex is very much into. Yeah, I want one of these bikes and I think I will own a Ninja 400 at some point. I was shopping pretty hard for one of these um, really just a couple weeks ago and I ended up buying two other bikes. I got two Ovales instead. Um, we which add up to about one yeah, Ninja 400. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We talked about those in our last episode, which was all about mini motos. Um, but the sport category from Kawasaki is they're sport bikes, but they're more comfortable sport bikes. They're not your full on, like clip on, low it's handlebars. It's not the super sport. It's not the super sport category. So the sport category starts out with this Ninja 400 right here. Um, it's basically their entry level sport bike, it's a 399cc parallel twin. And it's a very affordable bike. It starts at $5,300. Um, they do make a sort of higher end version of it, which is the KRT edition. A couple hundred dollars extra gets you some race inspired graphics on it. And um, ABS. And ABS. Oh, well, I guess you can get it in a non ABS version. But. Which I really like. You can get both versions in ABS or non ABS. And I really like that because the reason I want one of these bikes is to use as a track bike. They're really good training tools. Everyone says if you want to ride if you want to ride faster, you have to ride slower. So the way to get faster is being on a slower bike. This yeah. doesn't make a whole lot of power. So you, you can practice a lot of your and cornering. Yeah, you can practice on the track, but it's also if you want a sport bike on the street and you're a fresh rider, you just took your MSF course, this isn't going to get you into a whole lot of trouble um, and you still get that, you know, ZX6R look basically. So yeah, just an awesome all around entry level bike, whether you are a super advanced rider and you wanna take it to the track or you wanna ride on the street. Now next up on our list, we have the Ninja 650, which is a mid-range sports bike. Uh, still not into the super sports, but you get a 649cc parallel twin, so it's a big bump up in displacement. It's also a big bump up in price. We're looking at $7,899. So $7,900 is a big jump from $5,300. But again, I mean, you're getting a lot more motor out of this bike. Getting into a 600, you're going to have just a lot more power. Um, so it's not going to be so much of a beginner bike necessarily. I mean, it's also not a leader bike. Uh, but kind of a nice in-between. Yeah, and same idea. You get the sporty look in a very street bike package. If you look at all the, if you're watching this on YouTube, and by the way, if you're not, if you're listening on Spotify, we do have the video version of this up on our YouTube channel, TFL Bike. But the video that's playing behind me right now, it's all street um, footage. This is made to be, same thing, a street bike. So 
If you want that racy look, any of these ninja bikes, really, any of the, the sport bikes within yeah. the, the ninja lineup are going to serve that purpose. They're going to be a street bike that gives you the race look and basically just pick your engine size. So with this one, if you have a little more experience uh, and you still want to be very comfortable on the street, because let's face it, a super sport for anything more than 30 minutes on the street gets hmm. pretty miserable. Um, you've got a great option here. I mean, you can see the TFT that we're looking at here is a pretty sharp looking display. It's not massive, but that's a major step up from what you get on the Ninja 400 though. It's a that's nice a, piece it, of tech. Yeah. It's a nice looking display. Um, and this is a display they use across a lot of their different models that you'll see as we kind of get down this list. Now, if you want the top of the line sport model of the Ninja, then you're going to be looking at the Ninja 1000 SX. And this is a big, big jump in price. This is $13,200. But with that amount of money, you get a 1,043cc inline four cylinder. So we're going now from a parallel twin up to an inline four, big jump in displacement. And this is a serious bike. We're also looking at features like a quick shifter on this bike, traction control. Yeah, it's um, got a slipper clutch. It's got ABS, like you mentioned. It's different even got cruise control. Cruise control. Um, so yeah, if you're doing a lot of highway miles, this is a good commuting bike. This is a good road trip bike if you're going on sort of a longer trip. Yeah, now if we want to go to the next step more aggressive in Kawasaki's Ninja lineup, then we're looking at the baseline Super Sport bike, which is a ZX6R. And that is the baseline, so there's no 400 in this category of Ninja bikes. Let me, let me touch on that real quick before we jump into this. So the Ninja 400 does have that more like comfortable setup on it, whereas these super sport bikes are a little more hunched over. Right. And I just wanted to mention this because I did talk about how the Ninja 400 was a really good track bike if you kind of modify the controls a little bit, right. put some clip-ons on it. What you get in these bikes and the ZX bikes is that race position from the factory. Not to say you can't ride that on the street. Plenty of people definitely do. Even That's though, why this is super sport because it's already more aggressive, right. not just in styling, but in your ergonomics, your body position. Um, and for the ZX6R, you get a 636cc inline four. So we're not looking at the parallel twin that you get in the 650. Uh, this is an inline four, which is pretty cool because the R6 is gone. Yep. But you can still get an inline four in the ZX6R. Yeah, I was just going to say that. If you're looking for a Super Sport in 2022, a 600cc Super Sport, probably the ZX6R is your best bet. Yamaha discontinued theirs. Yeah. Now they only sell a track only version of it that's not street legal. Um, Honda has a 600 CBR, double yep. R but it hasn't been updated in a long time. They have a new one that is out in Japan and has been out in Japan for like two years already. Who knows if we're ever <laughs> gonna see the new one here in the US. My guess is no, um, because if they wanted to bring it here, they probably already would have. So yeah, the most modern option really in the 600 Super Sport category is the Kawasaki. So I like that they offer it without ABS because a lot of people don't like riding with ABS on track and as you can tell by the pictures they're putting here this is a track bike i mean that's where it's meant to spend most of its time um so i like that they give you the option to not buy abs but that is just a crazy price jump that's what thirteen hundred dollars to add abs to the bike you can also get a krt uh, edition on this bike which actually if you want abs it's cheaper it's cheaper so That's interesting. buy the KRT edition if you want ABS. But if you're Alex, I guess you don't want ABS. Well, it depends if you're using it as a street bike or a track bike. If I were buying this for the street, a thousand percent, I would want ABS. On the track, not so much. Anyway, on to more bikes I don't understand. We have the ZX-10R, which is exciting, a 998cc now, four-cylinder quick shifter, traction control, launch control. Man, yeah, there's a lot going on with this bike. Yeah, this is a, a bike that was recently redesigned. I really like the new look of it, and I wish they would do the same style on the ZX-6R. Oh, my God. Have you seen the price on this? Uh, we'll get there. It's $17,200. It's a leader bike. What do you expect? That's um, a lot of money, dog. It is a lot of money. Woo! 
<laughs> what are I you just, looking at now? I just looked at the price for the ZX10R. Wait, wait, wait. We're oh, getting yeah. there. We're getting there. Um, I was talking about the look. They redesigned the front end of this. A lot of people hate it. I think it's awesome where they have this like wedge shape cut into the front of it with the headlights. I think it's a really cool sort of race inspired look. But yeah, this is their leader bike. So if you want a leader bike from Kawasaki, this is your option. Like I said, I think the new design, you can kind of see a little more close up there how that front end is styled. I think it's a really cool looking bike. Um, and I think they, they really killed the look of it. Let's get to the price, cause Case was screaming. I, well, I just got the, the straight up heebie-jeebies uh, <laughs> from the ZX-10RR. And yeah, so it, it starts at 17.2. That's without ABS for the standard model. 18.2, yeah. so you add another $1,000 if you want ABS. Then you can get a KRT edition. KRT edition is the same price, but with uh, special race-inspired graphics. And then you explain this. Yeah, this is their track-focused version. Limited production, so you're paying for the rarity of it. Are you? Yeah, the, the color scheme... I get it. It's a Kawasaki. It's supposed it's to be green. green. It's <laughs> very green, though. There's not much detail in there for how much you're paying. You want to go ahead and read off the price? It's $29,000. $28,999. Yeah. Which, granted, uh, is a little shocking of a thing to scroll down to and see after immediately looking at seventeen two as a base price. Obviously, seventeen two to 29000 is a big jump, but to be fair... Uh, yeah, this is, like you said, a limited production track-focused bike. It's also got lightweight pistons, titanium connecting rods, a beefed-up valve train. Marchesini forged wheels. That's a big one. That's probably where a lot of that money is going. Yeah. I mean, there's there's more. It's more than a graphics kit. Yeah, and it better be for the, the amount of money you're paying for it. Yeah, that um, that, that is a serious build, yeah. a serious bike. Now, if you want a Ninja Super Sport model that gives you some very large numbers, they make the ZX-14R, and this is not really a track bike. Well, it's, it's a not track a, bike. It's, it's a different kind of track bike. It's a bike. drag bike. It's yeah, exactly. Bike. It's a straight track bike, yeah. not, not a turny one. So 1441 CC in line four. This is a Hayabusa competitor. That's really the best way to put it. Um, if you want to go really fast in a straight line, if you want to go to whatever motorcycle show you want, whatever bike meetup you want, and you want to have the most badass, most yeah. powerful bike there. Or if you live in Florida where roads are only straight. There you go. Right? And it's also actually less expensive than the ZX-10R. It's 15600 versus uh, around seventeen. So Not a very popular bike. I don't see these all that often. Yeah. I've only seen a couple of them. Um, the headlights really funky. We were talking about that before. You've got six headlights up front. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of a special thing in a motorcycle, let's move on to their hyper sport bikes. Their yeah, you, supercharged you might bikes. have thought that super sport was as grand as it could get, but no. Kawasaki also has their what they call hyper sport bikes. And these are uh, the majority of the H2 models. There's another H2 that we'll get to momentarily, but. The Ninja H2s start with the H2 SX. So this is the more affordable, slightly less crazy version of the H2 at $27,500. It's a little bit more set up like a sport tour. Emphasis on sport for sure, because you've got a supercharged 998cc four-cylinder, uh, 228 horsepower, Yeah, which is a lot. It sounds like a lot till you get to some of the other bikes in this lineup, and you're like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, there's um, one other. But, you know, something a little more affordable. If you want that supercharged bike, you can get into it a little cheaper. And uh, with not quite the crazy look you get on some of the other supercharged bikes from Kawasaki as well. Yeah, the regular H2 comes in at $30,500, and uh, when it comes to appearance, what we have jotted down in our notes here is that it's the Chrome Daddy Superbike. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's got a lot of chrome on it. I think this is an awesome motorcycle. I would love to throw a leg over one of these. I'd love to yeah. own one of these, but I can't justify owning a motorcycle that costs that much yeah, money. Yeah, almost as much as your truck. You also get Brembo Stilemma calipers. I mean, they're really nice components on it. Unsurprisingly, you would hope as much for a bike that's got 228 horsepower and costs 
30 grand. And then if you have even more money to spend, you can get the H2 Carbon for $34,000. Which just gives you a carbon fiber upper cowl. Um, so very similar bike, but a little, little splash of carbon in there. I don't know if I'd even go for the carbon one. I mean, I think the whole point of this bike is that you have a ton of chrome on it. I don't want to hide that I mean, chrome with carbon. Okay, now we have to talk about probably the craziest bike Kawasaki makes. The H2R. I think is pretty reasonable. Yeah, H2R. Craziest thing is the first thing that your eye immediately drops to when you click on it on their website, uh, the MSRP. $56,500, which is a ton of money for a bike you can't even ride on the street. This is not street legal, comes with full on slicks, doesn't even have headlights or a spot for a license plate or anything like that. Full on track bike, big big old winglets in the front, straight out of MotoGP. Um, yeah, all the tech, all the carbon, all the Olins and Brembo and everything that you would expect from a bike with that kind of price tag. And also, it's not 228 horsepower, no. You're breaking 300 horsepower. Yeah, with over this bike. 300 horsepower, depending on who you ask, because Kawasaki doesn't publish their own horsepower figures. So it depends on who's testing it. But according to published reports, as much as 330 ish horsepower, yeah. um, like 326, something like that. I mean, that's. <laughs> it's crazy. That's a good chunk of horsepower for a car. Yeah. And as this bike doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, the H2 makes a ton of sense to me to have something that crazy. There's there's always people out there that want the craziest bike money can buy, and there will people there will be people that will spend their money oh. on that. With this bike, it takes a special breed of a person to drop fifty six thousand dollars on a track only bike. Um, as far as I know, there's like no racing series where this is even legal in. So right. this is a track day bike, not a race bike. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but yeah, th I, I can respect and appreciate, um, that, you know, this, this is just a statement of like, here's, here's what we can do. This is how badass of a bike that we can produce and put out there. And so as, as kind of a halo flagship, most badass thing that you can buy, I mean, this, I, what other bikes are crazier than this? There's it, there's some the, really insane sport bikes out there. I think this is as good as it gets. But I yeah. think this is as crazy as it gets. Not every brand even cares that much about having a Halo bike, but yeah. it's cool. Like like we've been saying, we can appreciate the engineering and the it's fact a, that Kawasaki's even willing to build this says a lot. So. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Our next category of bikes, that wraps up the Ninjas. Now we're moving on to the Zs, which is another big category of Kawasaki bikes. There's a lot of bikes with a Z in front of their name. The smallest of which is a bike that we talked about in the last podcast a little bit is a Z125, which is a Grom competitor at $3,400. Yeah. And speaking of bikes we want Kawasaki to send us, this is number one on my list. I really want to compare this to the Grom, yeah. see why people aren't buying this as much as the Grom. Um, and really just experience it, get a good, honest opinion on it. So, yeah. so, so like the Grom, you're looking at a fuel injected 125. Um, that's very similar. Although this is still rocking a four speed transmission. It's been a while since this bike has been updated. The new Grom, um, has a five speed. So does the Benelli. Um, so it's, it's starting to get a little bit dated. We would love to throw a leg over one, like you said, and just get understanding of the bike and the appeal see how it rides compared to the grom um but as best as we can tell without having thrown a leg over it it, it seems like it could probably use an update but understandably uh, the mini moto segment i don't know i feel like it's very off or on like a lot of honda's bikes they sell to a point where people are frustrated because you can't even get hands on one and then I think for a lot of other manufacturers, they're not moving huge volume, so it's hard to justify investing a lot of time into developing. Yeah, next generation. and I mean, it makes sense right now. Like, you look at this next to the Grom, and you're like, yeah, well, obviously people are buying the Grom. It's got ABS, or at least you can get it with ABS. It's got a more modern dash. It's got, you know, yeah. that revised five-speed transmission. Um, so this does look 
pretty outdated compared to the new Grom. It is but also less expensive. It is less expensive, but when Not this, ton. when a few, like let's go back three, four years when this and the Grom were kind of even, you know, when the Grom had much more basic instrumentation and when the Grom still had a four speed, um, they were very similar bikes. So I was always a little baffled by the fact that these weren't as popular. People still buy them, but they weren't nearly as popular as the Groms. So yeah, we'd, we'd love to kind of test yeah. it out for ourselves, not take other people's opinions and really see what this bike is all about. Now, next in the Z lineup, so that was what Kawasaki calls a mini naked. Now we get onto the super nakeds. So this is kind of similar a little bit uh, to some of the uh, sport lineup in their Ninja bikes because it starts with the Z400 at $5,400. Um, yep, so you're looking at a 399cc parallel twin on this bike, but you still get some of that more angular aggressive styling even though it's not that aggressive of a bike. This is another good option as a beginner bike. Um, this is a great first bike. Yeah, because a naked bike should be, well, I don't know. How much different do you think the riding position on this is than a Ninja 400? It's still probably, less aggressive? it's definitely still less aggressive. I mean, the, the Ninja still has clip-ons. They just mount above the top triple. So right, they still have a that bit angle of a riser. To them. Yeah, so they're, they have a riser. Um, this is a traditional handlebar. So, um, yeah, you're not quite as hunched over on this. You can see this guy riding it. I mean, his legs are still kicked a little far back, and they're, they're yeah. decently high I mean, up. you're not feet forward, no, lean back like a cruiser. No, it's not But it's definitely going to be Pretty more upright, comfortable yeah. than the than the, the Ninja 400s. $100 more for this bike than, than the Ninja. Um, yeah. But the ABS is standard on this, so it pretty much evens itself out. And now another similar... One, one last thing. I think oh. this teal color they're doing is awesome. Yeah, that Isn't is that cool. cool. Yeah, we're kind of hoping that some of the 90s colors that were on Power Sports products back in the day, those those like the teal and pink and purple, yeah. and that, we want that stuff to make it back in a yeah. Power Sports product. And products. it's starting to come back. Yeah. I mean, Kawasaki's bringing the teals back, Honda's bringing the teal and the, the pinks back, so... Yeah. It's yeah. happening. Keep it coming. Get ready. 90 style is back. If you don't like it as much as we do... You're wrong. The next couple, you're wrong, and also the next couple years just aren't going to be that fun for you. Yeah, um, buy buy a from used motorcycle from three years ago and hold on to it for a while. That's our professional prediction: is that '90s colors are coming back to the motorcycle industry. Watch it happen. It's starting with small bikes first. It's gonna it's gonna move on to bigger bikes, and moving on to bigger bikes in the Z lineup. Next similar step up that we had in the sport category of their Ninjas, we've got the Z650 next in their super naked bikes. And this is a parallel twin 649 CC. Again, a familiar engine. This is a bike I almost bought actually. Um, really? Yeah, when I was back in college and I was sort of transitioning away from dual sports and looking for my first street bike, um, I was looking at one of these. I went and sat on one brand new in a dealership and I absolutely fell in love with it. The riding position on it is so comfortable. It's one of those bikes that you, you sit in, you don't feel like you're sitting on it. Like the tank comes so high up. Um, and the, the tail section too, you feel like you're in the bike and that gives you a really good connected feeling to it. Um, I didn't end up buying it. I went and bought an FZ07 instead, and that's because I couldn't find one of these used, and I didn't have the money to buy one new. Right. Um, but I did really like it, and I was really bummed out when I was at the dealership and figured out I couldn't quite afford it because it was really cool, really comfortable. Um, and speaking of that kind of really good riding position, that transfers right into the Z900 too. Also, oh, uh, so the not Z, too price. Z650, $7,549. Uh, and then you can also get the uh, 50th anniversary version of it, which gets you uh, red graphics. Um, it gets you special seat material. It gets you a coffee table book. Coffee table book's cool. Coffee table book's cool. That's 8,300 bucks. Z900 at $9,200. Yeah, so what I was Still saying with the 10. Z900, I got a little excited there because uh, I really like the Z900. It's got the same thing as the Z650 where you really feel like you're sitting in the bike. This, I think, more so than the 400 to the 650. The Z900 and the Z650 look really similar. You could definitely mix those two bikes up. Um, but same idea. I made a video review on one of these 
that was what, like a year and a half or two years ago out in California, had a really cool paint scheme on it with a bright green frame, um, really metallic black and white paint on it too. And it was a really fun bike. Again, loved the riding position. Um, and it was a bike I was really interested in because it's a direct competitor to my personal street bike, which is an MT-09. Um, and I loved it. I mean, to have an inline four on in a naked street bike, I just thought was something that felt unique that shouldn't have felt unique. Like it, it made so much sense that you were like, why doesn't right. every manufacturer do something like this? And then they also do a 50th anniversary version of the Z900, or you can get the more exciting Z900 SE, which gets you Olin suspension, gets you better brakes from Brembo. Um, also gold fork tubes. Gotta have the gold fork tubes. You can mm -hmm. get those on the 50th anniversary too. Yeah. And this is 10,700. So a good bit of extra money for the SE, but better suspension and brakes. It's kind of a nice package to have. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to, this is the top of the line naked bike, basically. If you want the fastest naked bike, Oh, I shouldn't say that. We've got one more crazy one. Yeah, coming. I was going to say. <laughs> um, if you want a fast naked bike from yeah. Kawasaki, very good option with the, the Z900. Yeah, because they also make something that they call a hyper naked, which is that last H2 that we were talking about at $18,500. That makes this the most affordable H2. So if you want that crazy motor, uh, the ZH2 is the way to go. They make an SE version of it too, which gives you a different paint scheme. You also get Showa Skyhook suspension. Um, you get a higher quality Brembo caliper up front. Yes, dilemmas instead of monoblocks. Stainless steel brake lines. Um, so yeah, a little more of a premium yeah, option there. That's 20,700. And that is the craziest naked bike that Kawasaki makes. So that would indeed be the that craziest would be the naked one. bike they make. Now, still in the naked category, at least according to Kawasaki, but very different in terms of styling are the Z650 RS and the Z900 RS. Starting with the 650 at $9,000 MSRP, this is that same parallel twin 649 cc engine i mean you're you know you're basically looking at a z650 just better looking yeah yeah i i don't agree with the better looking uh, well you should but that's the great part about these motorcycles is you can kind of get the same package but in a different style so if you want the retro style you can go with the rs model if you want the sport bike style drop the rs just get the regular z650 these are kind of what I call like modern classic bikes because they still have all the modern technology and instrumentation and lighting and everything. They're fuel injected. They're liquid cooled. They um, just look better. I don't know about that. Because they have round they, headlights. They do look cool. Tanks. They're not so I'd buy angular. The, I'd buy the Z900 over a Z900 RS, but I do think they are cool looking bikes. Because to me... A lot of sport bikes that or awesome naked too. bikes look like you crashed your motorcycle into a plastic factory and there's just all these angles sticking off of it and you look at it and you think, why? What's the point of that? Or you could get a motorcycle that has a round headlight on it, which, which makes everything no better. No creativity to it. A round no headlight style. makes everything better. Yeah, all right. A hundred Fifty percent, and they have the fiftieth anniversary of this bike too. So if you're really into that coffee table book, this is another way to get it. Um, they also have a chrome grab rail on the back and gold wheels, which is really nice. The gold with the wheels red tank. are cool. Yeah, the gold wheels are cool with the green tank too, though. Yeah, and that's nine thousand two hundred and forty-nine dollars. So that's a cool green. It's like a, a retro, more pastel-y. Yeah, the green is cool too. I like the green, especially because it's Kawasaki. Yeah, but also. If you want to step up from the 650, you can get the 900 RS. And again, we're dealing with the same thing here. So 948 CC in line four. Um, yeah, very similar bike to the regular Z900 with a round headlight. And also a couple different model options here. So this starts at 11,949, um, which is actually a good bit more expensive than the regular z900 so yeah it's kind of a big bump up in price same thing is true for the 650 rs um but again it's a lot better looking but there's a couple different versions of the bike you can also get a cafe which is really cool it gives you that awesome. front fairing 
black and gold paint scheme, which also looks incredible. Um, brushed, and, brushed exhaust. You got like yeah. a different finish on the exhaust. And then you can get the SE version of the Z900 RS, just like with the regular Z900, for thirteen thousand four ninety four forty nine, which which is a good chunk of change, but also really good looking bike. It's got what they call the yellow ball styling, so it's black and gold and yellow and Olin suspension. They are beautiful bikes. I mean, the the detail that goes into the seats on these is incredible. There are some subtle differences between the seats on the cafe and the other two bikes. Um, And I really like the exhaust on the 900 RS compared to the the 650 RS. It kind of sweeps up a little higher, goes closer back towards the rear wheel. Moving on, uh, we have now the Versus lineup of Kawasaki motorcycles. And most of these lineups from this point on are a lot smaller yeah. than the Ninja and the Z lineups, which are huge. Kawasaki makes a lot of sporty sporty bikes. Absolutely. Now, this is a category that uh, Kawasaki calls adventure touring. Um, it definitely leans more touring. The, the Versus bikes from the factory and tires are not very aggressive. Uh, but the lineup starts with the Versus X, 300 at $5,900 MSRP. And this is the only Versus bike in the lineup that has an X in its name. So let us know in the comments if you know why. Yeah, that kind of baffled both of us a little bit. but Real, real baffling. But 296cc twin cylinder, that's the Versus X300. If you want to go the next step up in the Versus lineup, you can get a 650, which is the very familiar 649cc parallel twin. So you're going to get a good chunk of extra power for a good chunk of extra change. It's 5900 sorry, 8900 bucks instead of $5,900. Um, and there's two models of it. You can get a regular uh, versus 650, or you could get the 650 LT, which gets you some hard side cases and some hand guards. Um, so a few extra items if you're going long distances. You can get this bike with those additional extras straight from the factory. Looks a little bland and all and all black to me. I definitely like the green one better. Yeah, me too. But yeah, mid-range um, touring bike from Kawasaki. Um, there is a lot of engine sharing in Kawasaki's lineup, as you would expect. They make a ton of different models, and if they had a brand new engine come out for every model, they'd be out of business pretty quick. So yeah. that's why you're going to see a lot of... Um, a lot of carryover in engines from different models, but that's a good thing. I mean, if you own a motorcycle that has an engine that was sold in 10 other motorcycles, that only means that parts and service for it yeah. is going to be much easier. So Yeah, and you'll you'll know more of what you're getting. If it's been reliable in other bikes, it'll probably be reliable in whatever bike you're getting. Exactly. Uh, and then the top of the range in the Versus lineup is the Versus 1000 LT. And this is only an LT model as as. Kawasaki presents it, um, which means you get those side cases. You also get a lot of technology on this top of the line 1043cc model, which you would expect for $18,400. It's uh, it's expensive. Yeah, you get um, the Showa Skyhook suspension that's on a lot of the other bikes. You yeah, get cruise shifter. control, adjustable windscreen. Um, big saddlebags as well. You can even fit a top case to it if you want, but it comes with the saddlebags from the factory, 28 liters. Um, nice TFT, same one they use on a lot of their, oh no, it's not the same one. This is the, uh, the one we said looks mm. really cool with yeah. the dummy lights on the outside. I do like the dummy lights around the, uh, the tack there on the left. It looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, again, I mean, it's not the most sophisticated display that you could find in the bike industry, especially with adventure bikes. There's a lot of adventure yeah, bikes that have cool really nice there. tech. I but like this, though. I like the cool analog and digital mix. I like how it has an analog tack. There's something about revving a bike up and seeing yeah. that needle climb up. Um, but then you still have, you know, all your settings, big colorful screen there where you can change your modes and everything. You've got a little DC 12-volt socket, so can mount up a uh, uh, RAM mount for your phone and charge your phone while you're putting a lot of miles on this bike. So, um, yeah, this is made to be a, a big old tour and take you a lot of places. These accessory lights are pretty cool. They put on the front of them, too, kind of down low, light, yeah. lighting up the road. Um, a lot of lights on the front of that bike. Yeah. So Now, getting on to a bike that is actually the kind of bike worth owning, we have... 
the Kawasaki W800. And this is what they call a retro classic. Already you can tell why I'm excited. I'm excited about this one too. Are you? I am. Good. You should be. $9,200 and you get a 773cc air-cooled twin. So legitimately some old school mechanics and design going in here. It's not like the Z900 RS and the Z650 RS where you've got a modern sport bike with a round headlight basically or a modern naked bike with a round headlight. This is legitimately more old school. Yeah, and the reason I can get behind this bike is because there's a lot of history behind it, which I always think is cool when a, a motorcycle manufacturer can play into their history and make a modern bike that speaks to the roots. I think that's really cool. So this bike is supposed to resemble the W1, which came out in 1966, basically to compete with all the British bikes of the time. And it looks like a British bike. It does. I mean, it's even got the pea shooter exhaust. Yeah, it just full on, like that tank um, with the, the chrome badge and the stripe and that like little black pad on the side of it just screams old 60s British bike to yeah. me. <laughs> Next we have a motorcycle that neither Alex nor I are uh, old enough to fully understand. This, this is... thing's <laughs> ugly. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> this is a Concours, I think I'm saying that right, 14 ABS. So 1,352cc inline four-cylinder with variable valve timing. Um, so it's based somewhat on the ZX14R powertrain, uh, but... It's, yeah, this is just like a, it's a gigantic sports touring bike, what they call a super sport touring bike. I like how they put ABS in the name of this bike, because this probably came out when ABS was brand new. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been the same look. They've made some minor tweaks to it, but it's basically had the same look since 2008. And yeah. you can tell looking at the front of it, it's got old school, like halogen style headlights and they're giant big bug eye headlights up front. Um, yeah. And I say that this is an old guy bike, uh, because it's the kind of bike my dad would ride or does ride because my dad has an FJR 1300. Yeah. Um, which I rode <laughs> my, my girlfriend, and I took it to a coffee shop and it's, yeah, it's, it's got a big windshield that you can uh, adjust, uh, with a buttons power windshield thing is unbelievably heavy yeah. and long. Um, but it is all, it's very comfortable. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. It's just nothing about it is exciting. What about the price? Does that excite you? 16000 Oh, I was looking at the wrong bike. I was like, oh, $7,300 isn't that bad. <laughs> 16000 is a lot of money for an old bike. This, yeah, let's an face old it. guy bike. It's an, no, oh, an it's old an old bike. bike. It's both. It can be both. Yeah, it's an old bike, though. I mean, it... it they're still selling a bike. Again, they've made some minor tweaks to it, but it looks old. It's old technology. Um, it's the, got removable hard cases on the side. Yeah, the tech on it, like it's it, it has ABS and that's basically it. Like it doesn't right. have any sort of crazy. It's got variable. It's got VTEC, bro. <laughs> wow. That's a reason to own one. Yeah, I, I don't know. This bike, they should discontinue or <laughs> <laughs> redo. And I don't, I don't like being that harsh, but... Well, but you know what's funny, though, is that the, the kinds of people that like these types of bikes, uh, they're diehards for them. And they really don't get a lot of press and exposure, but there is... There's, no, there's, there's a, a market out there yeah. for them. And but the kind of people that buy this bike are the kinds of people that buy a bike and hold on to it for 20 yeah. years. Too. But I also feel like I don't see this. Maybe maybe my eyes just glaze over when one goes by, but I feel like I don't see this type of bike out there on the road no. that often. We also live in like a college town, basically, where half True. the bikes around here are They're either... clapped out sport bikes and yeah. sports. So yeah, most like college kids aren't buying a... <laughs> a sixteen thousand dollars sports yeah. touring bike? Not at all. Yeah. Um, but it's it's long in the tooth. It I don't know. There's better options out there. If you want something like this, there's great bikes to choose from. I wouldn't go with this one. Now, finally for the street bikes, we get into a lineup that is a lineup a little bit more in my direction. These are cruisers. This is the Vulcan lineup. Alex is I'm gonna beyond shut stoked. Up. I'm, I'm gonna beyond shut up. stoked. I don't hate cruisers. Like I, I don't have a lot of experience on cruisers. You just got to go fast. Well, I no, I rode that Honda <laughs> Rebel, the the 1100. Yeah, you liked the Rebel, right? I really liked the Rebel. 
In general, I don't like cruisers because I'm a tiny dude and cruisers typically weigh like eight, 900 pounds and they terrify me. I don't like bikes that heavy. But the I seat just height don't. is low. The seat height's low, but that doesn't mean my leg is going to be able to hold the bike up. I've ridden them before. I like that Indian we had. That was what, like 900 pounds? Yeah. I could do it. I could ride it. I didn't enjoy it at all. So it could be the best motorcycle ever put out there in the world, but it's usually the yeah. weight that steers me away from it. Every time Alex pulls my Sportster off of its kickstand, the glare that gets fired oh, I have to in take my direction. off work the next day. I yeah. have to like lay in bed the whole day. <laughs> so again, uh, starting off the Vulcan lineup, we have what they call their sport cruiser, which is the Vulcan S. It's the most approachable, most affordable cruiser in the lineup. Uh, $7,349, 649cc parallel twin. Uh, you can get a cafe version of it for 8100 bucks, which is pretty cool. It gives you like a, it gives you a bug deflector and different paint um, and some special badging. But yeah, these are just overall good looking bikes. It's again, that familiar 649 CC parallel twin that you have in so many of the other bikes. Um, not a bad option for you know, less than $7,500. It's not a crazy expensive bike. The matte green one's really cool. I like that. Yeah. A little odd with the, uh, the cafe. Looks like, I don't know, that looks like the paint scheme they'd put on like a Ninja 400. It looks very sporty. Right. Um, yeah, I like, I like, I like the, the flat paint. Better. Yeah, That's and you can get. get it with ABS for seventy nine hundred bucks. Next up, yeah, next up in the lineup, we have a Vulcan nine hundred for nine thousand dollars. So again, big bump up in price, but a nine hundred and three cc V twin, which realistically is kind of the motor that you want in a cruiser bike because cruisers rumble, they yeah. go together well. That's I mentioned that I really like that Honda and the what was it the Rebel 1100 and that's yeah. what it was missing was yeah. a, a big V twin rumble. It sounded, it looked cool, it rode really nicely, but it didn't sound right with that engine. And here you get the the true V twin yeah. sound. That that lumpy idle is a lot of what gives cruisers their character, uh, and also V twins are just fun engines. I'm a fan, so. You can get the Vulcan 900 if you're into a V-twin. Might be worth the extra money. I like V-twins myself. So 9,000 as a baseline, but you could also get the Vulcan 900 Custom for 9,500 bucks, which gets you different handlebars. It gets you a different set of wheels. It's a little bit less retro, a little bit more modern. It's more have, sinister. Like, look, yeah, look blacked at the out wheels. exhaust. Uh, yeah, so instead of wire spoke wheels, you have a more modern wheel shape. Um, it's cool so, they're doing white walls on the classic though. Yeah, do like white walls. And then you can also get a classic LT for 10,000 which gets you some added features like soft bags on the back, you get a backrest for your passenger and you also get a windshield on the front. So, if you're going long distances, this is going to be the more comfortable kitted out bike in the Vulcan 900 line, but if you want a really kitted out Vulcan for very long distances, um, you can get one of the Vulcan 1700s. There's a Vaquero ABS and a Voyager ABS that are both specced slightly differently. They have a 1700cc V-twin, 52 degree. Um, you have a frame-mounted fairing at the front, so when you turn the bars, the fairing isn't going to turn, kind of like a sport bike, kind of like a uh, a road glide also radio sound systems included in yeah them. also more tech and also a bigger price tag so the vaquero is seventeen thousand six hundred um, and then the voyager is nineteen thousand three hundred because it gives you a bigger windshield it gets you a top case you get more chrome so it's a little bit more of that old school look not quite as dark and sinister and modern um so yeah, two really big options for V-twin bikes that can cover huge long distances, keep you comfortable. Um, but these are your honestly, Japanese Harley and Indian bikes, basically. Yeah, basically. Although I personally I, I like something like the Vulcan 900 better, just because it's a simpler bike. Well, now that we're past all that boring nonsense, let's move on to the KLR. The whole Versus lineup, they're not really off-road bikes. And if you look at other manufacturers like Yamaha does multiple Tenere's, Honda does, you know, an Africa Twin, and they've got that CB500X we had for a while. They have a, 
a lineup of dirt focused street bikes basically yeah. kawasaki only has one and we think that's because they only need to you make a bike this legendary and yeah. you really don't need to have a whole lineup of them. yeah and i mean technically they have more than one dual sport and they categorize the klr as a dual sport which is fair it's heavy for a dual sport yeah it's a big um, bike for it's, a dual it's sport. a big dual sport it's a dual sport that leans a little bit adv because it's just going to be bigger more stable and happier yeah. i'd on call road this than an adventure average. bike i wouldn't yeah. call this a dual sport yeah um, um but this is a bike that like we said has been around for a long time started in 1987 i believe and it wasn't until last year that they kind of yeah. gave it an overhaul i mean they've updated the bike over the years um but uh, you still get the essential things that make a klr a klr uh for one a low price tag 6900 bucks to buy one brand new which is really not that bad no and a 652 cc liquid cooled thumper so it's a single cylinder engine uh, and that's a that's one big cylinder. Yeah. These bikes are unkillable. Um, if you are watching this, you probably know of some other motorcycle YouTube channels. You've probably heard of Ryan at Fort Nine. Yeah. He made a whole video where he tried as hard as he could to kill one of these, like dropped it into awesome. a lake, <laughs> yeah. and it just wouldn't die. So, yeah, that's proof... Uh, of what kind of bike you want when you go off-road. If, if you're going off-road, you're doing long trail rides, you're basically overlanding on your motorcycle. You don't want to get stuck. You don't want to be breaking down. And these have been proven to be so reliable that yeah. you really just can't go wrong with one. So if you're if you're planning on doing like the Transamerica Trail, you want to you want a bike that's easy to fix on the side of the trail, easy to get parts for nationwide. Um, and you want something that's just fun, capable, and inexpensive you cannot go wrong with the klr 650 yeah and this bike just has a really cool history there were even some diesel versions of the klr for military application which is pretty badass imagine having a diesel klr yeah that'd be awesome yeah any I'm, diesel motorcycle would be sweet. <laughs> yeah we I'm both sure drive diesel trucks <laughs> yeah so i bet a diesel klr would be unbelievably slow because it's not a particularly <laughs> fast think? bike in a gas configuration but even still that's just cool yeah I, yeah it's... they um they g gave it a new look when they redid it but in terms of like mechanics yeah. they didn't change a whole lot which is a good thing because you know, that would open up a whole new can of worms, whether or not this thing is reliable. Yeah. When I they did, they, they did another redesign in the past, I think in like in 2008 on it. I don't think it was major though, was it? Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. Um, it still had like the same tank and bodywork and stuff. They just kind of gave it a new headlight and changed yeah. some of the, made the it a little bit uglier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the old ones are cool with the square headlight. And yeah. Everything. Like, like David's and yeah. that, the, majority of klr riding i've done is is on our buddy david's klr riding it around his ranch it's the most couch-like motorcycle yeah, i've ever been plush. on you can ride it over bumps and the wheels will bounce up and down and the bike itself just doesn't move and uh that that weightiness and couch-like riding style makes it a little it can be it can be kind of a lot on a harder trail just because it's heavy. I I rode it once in the snow and dropped it on my leg because it's just a beast of a bike. And when it starts to slip, it can be hard to catch it with your foot if it's uh, if it's slick out there. So yeah, it's it's kind of a big beast of a bike. But I mean, it doesn't matter. You can drop it all day long and pick it right back up and keep going. Yeah. Um, there are a few different models of the KLR 650 available, so you can get it as a base model with or without ABS. There's also a Traveler model available for $7,600, so a little bit of a price increase, but that gets you a top case, power port, 12 volt socket to charge up your phone, um, and a USB socket. And that one comes standard with ABS as well. And then there's an adventure model, which comes with some added gear for going off road, so you get uh, side cases that work off the same key as your ignition key, which, um, depending on how you look at it, could be an advantage or disadvantage of going with um, cases from the factory. You do only have to carry one key, but then you have one key that you got to shut the bike down and pull out of the ignition to open your cases. Uh, fog lamps, frame sliders, tank pads, hand guards, um, that DC socket, ABS is standard, and you get a very cool camouflage graphics package that case is not very fond of 
I'm not big on the camo. I love the camo. I mean, if it were a military diesel KLR, then I'd be down with the camo. That's basically what it is. It's like a Humvee of motorcycles. It's it? just a tank. Well, it's not diesel. No, but it's it's a tank. You just can't kill it. Well, it is cool. I'll give you that much. And then if you want some more serious off-road bikes, not having to carry around so much weight, then you can get something in the KLX lineup, which is also one of their bigger motorcycle lineups, KLX and KX. There's a lot of bikes in here. And um, I mean, Alex Well, let's go, you wanna I... do it kind of backwards. Let's stay in street bikes for a second. Let's bang these three out and then we'll go to the okay. all the off-road models. Yeah, we can do that. We've been doing street bikes for a while. So the most street oriented of any of the KLXs is the KLX well, 300 Supermoto. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Which actually, listening. you you and a buddy just bought. Yeah. So uh, my buddy Anwar, who may or may not be watching this video, is... I mean, uh, at this point, this deep in the video, I'd be yeah, surprised. Yeah, I'd be surprised <laughs> if he's watching. Leave a comment down below if you're still watching, because he bought a <laughs> sick bike. Uh, but he was down in Mexico for a while, and he found this popped up on the Denver Facebook Marketplace. Um, he got a really good deal on it. It was like $4,000 for a bike that had a hundred miles on it. Um, so yeah, he bought it used, but he was down in Mexico. So he texted me, he was like, Hey, do you mind going to buy this bike? So I went and bought it for him, had it in my garage for a week or two, um, rode it around, not too far around the parking lot, but I also rode one out in California and did a full review on a nice twisty mountain road. It's a really fun bike. Um, and once again, a bike that serves a lot of different purposes. This could be your first motorcycle um, because it is pretty low powered, easy to ride. It does have somewhat of a high seat, seat height because it's a yeah, it's dirt, dirt bike, bike. platform. Um, but if you've got some decent height to you, could be a great entry level bike. But also, if you have a ton of riding experience, it would be awesome in the canyons on a really tight road. That's where I had yeah. this thing, and it was or a ton of fun. it would be awesome with one tire on the ground. As a stunt bike, yeah. I mean, that would be amazing on it, too. We have a go-kart track here we film a lot of videos at, IMI Motorsports. It'd be a blast at that track. So, yeah, yeah. just a and versatile motorcycle you can do a lot with. And if you... At sixty three hundred bucks. Yeah, it's pretty affordable. So yeah. if, if you're into you know, if you're into commuting, you like stunt riding, maybe you want to go to the track, you wanna do some uh, some mountain rides, and maybe you only have like one parking spot at an apartment complex and you need to be able to park one motorcycle in front of your car. This is a do-it-all bike yeah. that you're not going to spend a ton of money on. You can keep it outside. Um, it's got plastic bodywork, so it's not yeah. that big of a deal. I mean, it's it's a 292 cc four-stroke, so it's it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world on on the street, but it'll be plenty fast enough to rock that front tire up off the yeah, ground for sure. And uh, I know my buddy Anwar, who bought one, is absolutely loving it. He has a Ducati Panigale 1199. So he rides fast bikes and he loves this bike. And he also threw his girlfriend on this. That's kind of half the reason he bought it was to have a bike yeah. to teach his girlfriend this is a on. bike you can drop. And she likes it a lot. So just goes to show it can suit a lot of different riding styles. Uh, if you want to stay dirty with this bike, you can save 400 bucks and you could get the $5,900 KLX 300 Dual Sport, which is... Same basic bike, but you stick with the dirt tires. So instead of 17s with street tires on it, you have a dirt bike wheel tire setup. Um, yeah, and this is just going to be a more traditional dual sport bike. You could ride it on a trail. You could ride it on the street, although it's not going to be a phenomenal street bike. Um, but yeah, same 292cc four-stroke motor. Um, the gearing's yeah. a little different on it. So the Supermoto version, the gearing's optimized for... Um, for the street, the suspension's optimized for the street. This is tuned a little more for the dirt. So yes, it is street legal. It can get you around town, get you on the trails, uh, get you to the trails, but you probably wouldn't want to yeah. spend a lot of time on the highway on it. Yeah. And also you're not going to carve corners on the 21 inch front wheel no. and the 18 inch rear, like you would on 17s exactly. with street tires, but exactly. that's not really what this bike is for. It could let you, if you live close to a trail system, ride from your house to a trail, ride the trail. Ride back ride home. home. No trailer, no truck. Yeah, and if you want to do the same thing for a little bit less money and you don't need as much power, you could get the KLX 230, also a dual sport, still something that you can get street legal for 4,800 bucks. Uh, you have a 233 cc four stroke and 
the option of a very, very cool graphic. For, for both the KLX300 and the KLX230, you can get dirt specific, so off-road only uh, KLX300R and KLX230R, and they're priced about the same, KLX300, which is the, the street legal dual sport, 5,900 bucks, exact same price for the 300R. Um, and then it's what it's 50 bucks cheaper for the 230R than the street legal 230. But the nice thing about the off-road specific models is they're not gonna have the light turn signals, everything on them. They're gonna weigh less. They're gonna be a little bit better for riding off-road. And then you can also get a KLX 140R or a 110R, which are much smaller displacement and also much less expensive uh, little bike. So the KLX 140R starts at $3,449. So a very inexpensive bike. It's got a little 140, 144cc air-cooled four-stroke motor. And then there's a couple different versions of the 140R. Uh, you can get an L model that has bigger wheels, a 19-inch front and a 16-inch rear, and it gets a bit more ground clearance. It's got 10 inches of ground clearance. Uh, and that's 3,749. And then there's also an F model, which gets you a 21 inch front wheel, 18 inch rear, 12.4 inch ground clearance, and also adjustable suspension, which is just over $4,000. Yeah. So a lot of different options there in the 140. I want to touch on the 110 for a second too. Yeah, because Alex loves I 110s. I love 110s. Um, I've owned three 110s now <laughs> from different companies. Um, so yeah, this is the smallest dirt bike basically that Kawasaki makes, um, at least in the, well, the four stroke yeah. sort of lineup. Uh, they make a 110R, MSRP is 2649 on that. Low seat height, not intimidating bike, great for kids. And they also make a 110RL model, which gives you a taller seat height at 28.7 inches. But the cool part is obviously you get more ground clearance too with a little bit of that added height there. Um, coolest part is you get a manual transmission with the manual clutch. So yeah. semi-automatic on the regular model where you just, you know, it's integrated into the shifter. You, you pull up on the shifter uh, and that's all you need to do. You don't have a clutch lever. On this, you get an actual clutch, which again is fun for adults. I would personally love a pit bike with the clutch on it. Um, but also it's kind of that next step up for young dirt riders. Yeah. Now for the KX line of bikes, we're looking at more motocross and also what they call cross country bikes versus just a regular off-road bike. Um, so starting off, we're going to have three youth bikes. These are the KX 65, KX 85, and also the KX 112. These are their two stroke youth dirt bikes. So the KX 65, at $4,000 has a 64cc two-stroke with a six-speed transmission, which is pretty impressive for a tiny little bike. And it has 9.4 inches of suspension travel, which is more than the Ducati Desert X that I rode a few weeks back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And that that's is pretty cool. That's not comparing the, the suspension travel on a kid's dirt bike to like some track focused street bike that's an off-road bike it's an adventure bike this ha yeah an this has one yeah this has more travel than that so that's pretty cool yeah for an extra 700 bucks so 4700 you could get the kx85 also a six-speed transmission just an 84 cc two-stroke a bit bigger of a bike or for 5400 you could get the kx112 which is going to be a good bike for a younger rider to transition into a full-size bike according to kawasaki uh, 112 cc two-stroke, again, six-speed, but you get a 19-inch front wheel and a 16-inch rear, so getting into more more close to a full-size dirt bike. Yeah, and then you have um, your full-size MX or your full-size dirt bikes. So you've got a 250, a 450, and a 450 SR, which is kind of your, your race-worthy one. So the 250, um, it's 249 cc Four stroke, dual overhead cam, $8,500 MSRP. Um, then you jump up another $1,600 to go to the 450. So from 250 to 450, if you want that extra power bump, um, extra $1,600. That gets you a 449cc liquid-cooled four-stroke, five-speed transmission, dual overhead cam, adjustable trans or 
transmission adjustable, <laughs> adjustable suspension, suspension yeah. the transmissions adjustable too i promise you can shift through the gears <laughs> um and then the sr model that's kind of your raced out super premium one yeah which is twelve thousand four hundred dollars so it's an expensive dirt bike but you get a lot of really nice components on it you get a different cylinder head you get a titanium exhaust special kyb forks and a special rear shock you get a steering damper special wheels a renthal rear sprocket a gold chain which you got to have and special graphics that come from the factory with a monster logo. So yeah. you're sponsored before you even throw a leg over this bike. I love the race inspired sort of graphics they do. It you, looks good. It, it does look really good. You've got some logos on the forks. You've got that big old monster energy logo on the side, um, special engine case. You've even got like a little white spot on the, the number plate there where you could put your number, same thing on the front plate. Um, so yeah, just makes it look like you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. out on the motocross track, which I think is cool. And then the bikes that they call their cross countries are the KX250X and 450X. Uh, really the biggest difference here is going to be that you get a side stand, you get a skid plate and an 18 inch rear wheel instead of a 19 inch rear like you get on the motocross version. So if you're trail riding and you know, you're know you not gonna be looping back to your side stand after you run a lap, then um, well, not side stand, but moto stand. Yeah. Uh, side stand's big. That helps yeah. a lot out on the trail. You don't yeah, have to find a tree exactly. to lean your bike up against and, you know, yeah. do that whole dance. And you get a little bit more protection for going over rocks, those kind of obstacles. Uh, yeah, you'll be looking at 8,600 for the 250X and 9,800 for the 450X. Yeah. There's one more bike. There is? There is. The electric oh, balance true. bike. Can't forget about that. Can't forget about that. So a lot of brands like Indian just came out with one of these. Um, they're basically like electric striders almost. They don't have pedals. They do have foot pegs, but they're tiny little bikes you can throw kids on, um, put them on a little kid's dirt track mm -hmm. or just in the backyard. And the whole idea is to get kids into riding at an even younger age. Maybe you don't think your kid has the control for a throttle yet or, you know, Maybe you're terrified as a parent to put your kid on something, or it's just too heavy and big for the size of your child. Um, throw them on this, yeah. and you can get kids. And, we need more riders if oh, we want to keep motorcycling alive. So I like the fact and, that and, they're And let's they're scroll down and see what Kawasaki says about this monster. Powerful 250-watt in-wheel brushless electric motor. Three selectable speed modes. It's got low, a disc brake. Mid, high premium disc brake um just on the back which hey in the dirt it's all you need right yeah. designed and built by kawasaki for 1100 bucks it's a real deal the t the all new 2023 electrode and it's still got it's not like a thumb throttle or anything it's still got a traditional twist motorcycle mm. throttle so yeah i mean damn lightweight aluminum frame this is nicer than <laughs> any of my bikes it's cool i mean the adjustable seat height if you're a young position. kid and your dad rides dirt bikes, you know, you'd probably be excited if he came home with like some yeah. little little bike for you to get on, but Imagine it'd be way more exciting having a bright green Kawasaki branded electric bike that matches your dad's dirt bike yeah, or whatever. It's got an adjustable so. lever. It can run for two and a half hours. Yeah, this is better than anything I own. <laughs> it's cool. I, I just, <laughs> I think most brands should be doing something like yeah. this because if they want to keep making big bikes they got to make small bikes and get young people into riding yeah, so you'd have to like your kid a lot to get them an 1100 dollars bike but uh i would imagine most people that have kids like their kids so it could be a good option you'd hope so <laughs> yeah Anyway, there's uh, the entire lineup of Kawasaki motorcycles. I don't yeah. know how long we've been at this, but that definitely took a while to get through. They make a lot of bikes. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of them are bikes that we either haven't thrown a leg over or, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just it's a lot of bikes. It is a lot. So, yeah, yeah hopefully you got some good information out of this. Um, yeah, we're happy to do the same kind of thing for all the different manufacturers. I'm curious what you guys own. So if you own a Kawasaki or if you've owned them in the past let yeah. us know what models down in the comments below or uh, if you own a concourse 14 abs and and you're upset with us for talking smack about it let us know bring why. it here we'll do a yeah, review on it, it. yeah
We'll Please. see what it's all about. It's a long distance bike, even if you live on the East Coast or something. Yeah. Ride it right no over excuses. here. No excuses. You should yeah, ride it all the way now. out here. Thought that's why you spent the 16 grand. Exactly. So ride it out here. Let us ride it and maybe it'll change our mind. There you go. Um, so yeah, let us know down in the comments below also what manufacturer you'd like us to see make this list for next. We'll definitely yeah. try Some and- Some are gonna be easier than others. If we do this kind of list for Honda, we're, oh, we're gonna spend an entire bikes. day making notes. It's yeah. gonna be a lot. Yeah, there's some other brands that'd be quick though. Yeah. We could do the Ovale lineup pretty fast. Wow, yeah, Maybe who wouldn't bikes. watch a podcast about the I would. Ovale lineup? Anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Definitely head over to alltfl.com so you don't miss any stories in the bike world. And we'll catch you in the next podcast.